is the Burris Oracle X the game changer for modern crossbows? Is it the right scope for you? And is it the right scope for me? That is this episode of Death by Bungie. I remember way back in 2010 when I first bought this crossbow, the original Bungie, an Excalibur Axion. I remember using the scope that came on it at the time and having to use a rangefinder to determine the perfect distances, the exact yardages that I was shooting. And I remember thinking at the time, why don't they just make a scope that has that rangefinder built in? Well, they finally have done it. Laser rangefinder crossbow scope, the Burris Oracle X. Mmm. Smells like hand sanitizer or something. It's got a nice little manual. It even says manual on it. Pretty sharp. That's, That's how you know it's the helpful. manual. That's how we know. How would we yeah. know otherwise? Yeah. We probably know because it's the only other item in here, the only paper item in here. This is the Bluetooth deal. Somehow you got to find a way to affix this to your crossbow and you you uh, toggle. That's when you push that button. It says, hey, range find whatever I'm pointing at and then set up the proper reticles for that item, for that animal or target or what have you. It has a CR123A battery. That's a fancy little guy. So that's the battery we will use. And if we open it up, look at this. Look at that scope. There's your first look. It is a pretty dense little monster, but it's actually a little smaller than I thought it was going to be. Now, the reason why combining a range finder and a scope becomes pretty valuable, I think, is because as crossbow hunters, as we know, yardage is very important. The closer you are to the exact yardage, the more accurate your shots will be. And as we are fond of saying here on Death by Bungie, accuracy is number one with crossbows. By combining the rangefinder with the scope, you don't have two pieces of equipment. This thing calculates in split seconds the exact yardage and adjusts the reticles for you. When we're taking 20 yard shots in the backyard or in the woods, distance is a little less important because the difference between 20 yards and 25 yards isn't quite as much as it might be between 55 yards and 60 yards. Ask me how I know. Hunting woodchucks in a 60 yard backyard, a shot at 55 yards when you're aiming as though it's 60 yards is not going to be an accurate shot. I shot right over his back. A scope like this lets you get an exact reading. So you're going to get pinpoint accuracy. Traditionally, hunting with a scope like this one with fixed reticles in it, basically you sight in it 20 yards, and then of course you adjust your speed ring in order to adjust that to the right speed of the scope to sort of convince the scope uh, as to what speed the crossbow is shooting. And the more accurate you get with that, basically the other reticles will fall in line. I've done most of my hunting with a scope of that style. It works great. For deer and other animals, you have to memorize those distances ahead of time before the animals arrive, sort of use the range finder to pick out trees and rocks or whatever, so we know those yardages. A scope like this would allow me to instantly know the exact yardage. It would instantly adjust the reticle to the perfect, perfect distance. Why did I choose this one? Why would I choose this one, for example, over the Garmin 0X1i, right? Aside from the long name I have to remember for this video. <laughs> but in all seriousness, why did I choose this one over the Garmin? Uh, you know, it's a matter of personal preference. There isn't a lot of differences. The Garmin, it's six inches long instead of 12 inches long like this Oracle X is. I am told that the eye relief on the Burris is a little bit better. Eye relief is very important to me in a scope. It has to snap on the minute I lift it up. It's got a snap right in place and I don't have to be hunting for the perfect eye relief. This one actually has fixed reticles built into it. So at 20 yards, if the battery went dead or the scope otherwise malfunctioned, I can still shoot at 20 yards and know my 20 yard reticle. So that gives me a little bit more leeway if the battery you know, died on me or if the scope died. With the Garmin, the reticles are only digital. So if the battery's not working, if the computer's not working, you're not going to have any reticles. The Garmin has a wire going from the scope to the remote control. This one actually has Bluetooth. So there's a little Bluetooth remote control that I just uh, zip tied right on here onto the onto the handle, onto the front handle. Can reach it with my thumb just perfect, ready to pull the trigger when the time comes. Both of those scopes, this one and the Garmin, do have the availability of different arrow setups. 
it's one of the things I like about this. I can have a couple of different arrow setups for my stock arrows that I'm going to be using on deer and woodchucks and maybe a heavy arrow, right? A heavier arrow that I'll be using for wild boars or something like that. We'll have that heavier arrow set up in here. So I don't have to recite in. I can just flip between the two in the on-screen menus. It got me to thinking, how will it perform with, let's say, a 550 grain arrow or a 600 grain arrow shooting around 250 feet per second, where you have a very, very distinct arc and a lot of arrow drop. I'm very curious to see how that scope likes that kind of arrow setup. That sounds like a really good topic for Crossbow Appreciation Month coming up in August. And here's a big one. This is one thing I really like about this scope. You can zoom in without affecting accuracy. That's something we can't do with those fixed reticle scopes that have a speed ring like this one. The traditional scope, when you're looking through it, once that speed ring is adjusted and you have it set up for the arrow weight of your choosing and the speed of your crossbow, if you zoom in using that speed ring, you're now changing your accuracy. You're no longer accurate at 30, 40, 50 yards. Kind of good to know. Don't make that mistake, right? One thing I like about this traditional scope on the OB here, on the original bungee, is that it's Kind of a slow crossbow so this scope the speed rings turned way down but that makes the reticles really big easier to read for my old eyes put this scope on a faster crossbow by the time you've got it to the proper distance with the speed ring now the reticles are real fine and close together because you don't have to lift the barrel of the crossbow up as much right so those reticles become harder to read with this scope on a modern crossbow, you really don't have that problem it's kind of nice what we do on this scope instead if, if i can zoom in make the reticles farther apart if I want to do that, zoom out, all that kind of stuff, zoom in and get a better look at the deer. It's a really handy feature. It doesn't affect the accuracy, right? It's a two to seven X zoom, I believe. The other thing about this one is it's a little cheaper than the Garmin version. Not that that's everything, but the reality is this kind of technology is not cheap. But if you want to see what the current price of it is on Amazon.com, go to the deathbybungie.com gear page and you can check out this and all the other gear that I use on there. Again, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I have to pay for it just like everybody else. For setup, it only comes with this little tiny manual. Look at this. It's just a pamphlet, right? It's not an awful lot of detail in here, but in all honesty, it really did have all the information set out pretty clearly as to what we needed to install it and set it up. <laughs> What? Sorry. There's you no, know what I'm laughing at. I know. There's no light in here, man. Like, you can't have... I used to have a light here, but somebody took that light. I wonder what happened to that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, you took it. But anyway, yeah, I'm just trying to get the scope off of here. So here's one thing we discovered right off the bat. Not a big fan of necessarily, but these are Torx head, okay? In order to attach this to your Picatinny rail or your Weaver style rail, these two screws, and they are... Torx heads. We have to go get a Torx wrench, which I have. It's not Allen wrenches. Which they gave us a Torx wrench. Woohoo, Genevieve, we're in business. <laughs> do, 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 do. It's a very nice soundtrack you got there. You like that? Do, 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 do. Yeah, done, you know. Get where I can see. Get the bump. <laughs> it is not bad, but. Actually, if I can get it in focus, it's probably right about where I want it. The concept behind it is pretty straightforward. You're going to use the 20-yard reticle, the fixed reticle, just like any other scope, and make sure that that's dead-on accurate at 20 yards. As you can see, working from the middle, that was our first shot. The second shot was the top one. Third shot was the bottom one. Fourth shot is the upper left. But we have dialed it in for the most part on the 20-yard deal. But now the question is what we can do we're pretty good. I'm, I'm that upper left one was the last one, so pretty happy with that. We're going to start taking pokes at longer yardages here. I've got various yardages set up, and I've got exact yardages set up. It's called truing. So basically, we're truing the rangefinder to the scope so that the computer in here knows what those yardages are. I chose to true it at 30 yards, 45 yards, and 60 yards. So it is dead on at those yardages. That little dot, when you're truing it, when you're sighting it in, becomes really, really small. It's hard to see that. But you're moving the cursor around, moving the dot around with the arrow buttons on top. And once you've got those to where it's hitting, the computer kind of remembers that. So it's dead on next time at 30. When you go out to 60 and do 45 and 60 or whatever, whatever yardage you choose, you spread it out to multiple distances. The computer 
automatically figures out the differences between those yardages. So all of a sudden now it's dead on at the yardages in between. There's no guesswork. Let me take a little shot at that uh, coyote down there. Genevieve likes the coyotes. That target was a gift from a friend of Bungie. I am gonna range find it. I clicked on that and it's telling me that's 49 yards. I'm ready to shoot. Here we go. Oh, I love this scope. Look at that. Hanging arrows on a coyote. 49 yard shot on that coyote. A perfect shot. So it works. I was a little bit concerned about the size of this thing. And if you compare the two, there really isn't that much difference, Genevieve. Oh, it's not that bad. Once it's installed, the crossbow really doesn't feel that much different, but it is a 30 ounce scope. So it's just shy of two pounds. That's pretty heavy. So this is the Scorpid with the Twilight DLX scope, right? Letting it go. Just a touch over eight pounds. With the Burris Oracle installed, oh, it's so heavy. It's almost the same. Overall, gear-wise, we're losing the rangefinder. I won't need to take that to the stand with me. So now I have one device instead of two, and the overall weight of it between that scope and this is probably about the same. One of the reasons I stuck with the Twilight DLX scope from Excalibur over the years was the low light performance. My eyes, as I get older, I don't wear glasses. I probably should, but my eyes really do appreciate a scope that gathers as much light as possible. My concern with the Oracle X is whether that would provide the same level of low light performance. I think I can see pretty good all the way to the bottom of the yard, the whole 60 yards. I can see a little bit of detail in the trees at the bottom of the yard, so we're doing pretty good there. That is at 9.13 p.m., which is the end of legal shooting light. And with this one, you recognize that, that's the old bungeonator there. And this crossbow, if I look through that, hard time seeing the reticles without them being illuminated. If I turn them on, scope, the chevrons or the, the reticles are a little bit bigger. But I can tell you, you have almost the same. To the naked eye, I don't see much difference in terms of the low light performance. By the end of legal shooting light, I could probably still take a shot with this in the backyard, out in the open, at least, where there's that much more light. In the woods, I'm sure it's a whole different ball game. Eye relief, very important to me that we have good eye relief with a scope. You gotta be able to snap it up there and boom, take a shot. No searching, no looking around and doing this stuff. That's one of the few things on a crossbow that is very, very personalized. Some scopes, I used a Hawk XB1, I think it was, that I put on here and I could not get good eye relief with it. I was too close to it because there's so many reticles and by the time I could see it, I was way up on top of it. Problem with that for me is when I take a shot, all of a sudden now I'm afraid it's gonna hit me. I like to be able to keep my eye open and watch the arrow go through the scope. I'm not afraid of this scope hitting me in the eye or anything like that and bouncing back because I think there's enough eye relief where I've got enough distance between my eye and the scope that that's not gonna happen. I will say this, I'm not 100% comfortable with it yet. When I take a shot, I'm unable, after I take the shot, I kind of lose the target a little bit. It's been accurate, that's not a problem. I think that's something I can work on over time. I'll get more comfortable with it. Is this scope legal? Boy, that's a good question, isn't it? I looked it up on their website and it's kind of funny. They have a map on there telling which jurisdictions where it's legal and where it's not. And then there's a whole category of states like Texas where it's likely legal. I'm not sure what likely legal means, but why wouldn't it be legal? Really, any place that you can use a rangefinder and you can use a scope on a crossbow, this should be legal. It's just a rangefinder and a scope. It's just one device that does both. Check your local laws, your local regulations, and make sure you can hunt with something like this before you go spending the money on it, though. I know there's a bunch of people out there, too, saying, I don't care if it's legal or not. It shouldn't be legal. It should be illegal. This isn't hunting anymore. It's Technology has gone too far because now you've got laser range-finding scopes. And it's not like back in my day when I hunted with a traditional bow and recurve and blah, 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 and all that stuff. The reality is... They make a device just like this for compound bows. So if it's legal and you can use it on your compound bow, why shouldn't I be able to use it on my fancy crossbow? Come on. This is a pretty expensive piece of equipment. I don't want to break it. But I'm happy to report that Boris has a forever warranty, no questions asked. In other words, you return it, they either fix it or give you a new one. That makes me feel pretty good. Like any warranty, it, 
really only matters what the company says when the time comes. This is the scope that's going to be accompanying me and Bungie the third into the deer woods, that's for sure. So I'm pretty excited to put this to good use. Also pretty excited to put this to good use in a 60 yard backyard and other places chasing woodchucks. And I think I'm going to do a video next week on hunting woodchucks. And we'll see if we have some more footage taking shots with this fancy new scope. Last year, I shot a woodchuck at 50 yards, and I'm happy to report that my daughter, the taxidermist, she's now a licensed taxidermist here in Pennsylvania, that she actually mounted that woodchuck and did a fantastic job. Will we be able to add to the trophies in the trophy room with this scope? You're going to have to stick around to see what happens. In the meantime, watch one of these videos. And all hail Bungie.